Virtual reality, or VR, is coming, and it could revolutionize the way we interact with technology in the near future. VR will create immersive and interactive environments that stimulate real-world experiences, apply to every facet of our daily lives from games, entertainment, education, training, therapy, and beyond. As VR becomes increasingly popular, it's time to think about how this technology will affect our brains and behavior. Before we explore virtual reality's effect on brain and behavior, be sure to subscribe to this channel and like the video so we can continue to feed you nuggets of information that help you mine the golden mind. Our brain generates perceptions, emotions, and actions. VR allows you to manipulate these sensory inputs of our brain, and we end up perceiving the virtual as real, triggering genuine emotional and cognitive responses. So far, studies have shown that harnessing the power of VR does have the potential to enhance spatial learning and memory consolidation, for example. Up till now, studies have shown that harnessing the power of VR does have the potential to enhance spatial learning and memory consolidation. For example, in one study, they found participants were able to learn 80 foreign words in two phonetically similar languages in VR contexts, with improved one-week retention. Although these results were primarily evident when participants learned the languages each in its own unique context and real-like environments, this still shows that VR does have an effect on cognitive development. In another study by Plus One, they got a group of older adults and ran them through two types of exercise training, one through virtual reality treadmill training and another via conventional treadmill training. The results demonstrated that both forms of training helped to improve physical and cognitive effects, ultimately benefiting from either or. Additionally, one other study leveraged virtual reality to assist rehabilitation and brain health of elderly people with mild cognitive impairment. In the study, they got a group of older adults to go through VR cognitive training and normal cognitive training over a period of 12 weeks. The results show that while both types improved executive function, the group that received the VR training had significant improvements in global cognition, verbal memory, and instrumental activities of daily living. Virtual reality also has the potential to trigger emotional responses. For example, studies have shown that VR can trigger feelings like fear, joy, and empathy in virtual environments. You can manipulate visual and auditory cues to evoke a feeling, and ultimately stimulate and activate the amygdala. One way that VR is being used in relation to emotion is treating anxiety disorders, including exposure therapy or virtual reality therapy treat, VRET for short. This gives individuals a controlled and safe setting where they can face their fears. Through VRET, patients can learn to become desensitized to anxiety-provoking stimuli exposing these very patients to triggers and stressors that elicit fear. But beyond just phobias, research is already being conducted on using VR to treat social anxiety disorder in teens and young adults. As Dr. Lauren Hoffman, assistant professor of medical psychology notes, we are excited about the potential of virtual reality-based therapy to improve social skills and ease the distress that teens and young adults encounter daily. We look forward to seeing VR reach young adults who might not otherwise have access to evidence-based treatment. Researchers have shown that virtual reality can improve social behaviors such as emotional empathy as well. In addition to behavioral therapies, VR has also been used to treat addiction, eating disorders, autism spectrum disorder, and many others. But before we get too excited about the potential benefits of VR, there are definitely a few things to consider when it comes to the technology, especially its potential concerns on behavior. For one, there are some ethical concerns. One growing ethical concern about VR is its potential for deception, manipulation, and exploitation, especially the more advanced and realistic it becomes. Soon enough, we'll have VR programs that are so realistic, it'll be hard to distinguish it from reality, and this can induce emotional distress or even create false memories. So this raises questions about its impact on mental health and well-being. Secondly, there are some health concerns. Using VR for prolonged periods may cause discomfort, from motion sickness to eye strain. We've already become quite sedentary from the emergence of the internet and smartphones. So with VR, this sedentary lifestyle may only worsen and as such, it's important to consider the greater health concerns of immersing ourselves too much into a virtual world. 
Thirdly, there are some privacy and data security concerns. Just like how there are countless privacy concerns with data sharing from the internet right now, with virtual reality, we add another layer of data being tracked from users' movements, behaviors, eye tracking, and physiological responses. This data will all inevitably be collected through VR experiences, so protecting users' personal information and ensuring data security is crucial. And finally, there's also the matter of accessibility and inclusivity. For all VR programs that come out, especially at the beginning, it's highly doubtful that it's going to be accessible to everybody, especially with people with disabilities. In order to make VR experiences accessible to everybody, you need to consider things like physical and cognitive accessibility. If VR is a highly visual medium, you would be secluding a large population of users that are blind. So the question remains, how do we design with accessibility in mind? Ultimately, virtual reality has a lot of advantages. There's no doubt about that. There's still a lot to learn about how it affects our brain and behavior, and a lot of the studies that were conducted up till now and mentioned are still in its infancies. Considering that we are now entering a world where VR will be mainstream for consumers, only time can tell on VR's long-lasting effects on brain and behavior. If you like this video, comment down below on what your thoughts are on the potentials of VR. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? And if you like content like this, subscribe to the channel so we can continue to help you mine the gold in mind.